To Think of Time, a poem by Walt Whitman. To think of time, of all that retrospection. To think of today, and the ages continued henceforward. Have you guessed you yourself would not continue? Have you dreaded these earth beetles? Have you feared the future would be nothing to you? Is today nothing? Is the beginningless past nothing? If the future is nothing, they are just as surely nothing. To think that the sun rose in the east, that men and women were flexible, real, alive, that everything was alive. To think that you and I did not see, feel, think, nor bear our part. To think that we are now here and bear our part. Not a day passes, not a minute or second without an accouchement. Not a day passes, not a minute or second without a corpse. The dull nights go over and the dull days also. The soreness of lying so much in bed goes over. The physician, after long putting off, gives the silent and terrible look for an answer. The children come hurried and weeping and the brothers and sisters are sent for. Medicines stand unused on the shelf. The camphor smell has long pervaded the rooms. The faithful hand of the living does not desert the hand of the dying. The twitching lips press lightly on the forehead of the dying. The breath ceases and the pulse of the heart ceases. The corpse stretches on the bed and the living look upon it. It is palpable as the living are palpable. The living look upon the corpse with their eyesight but without eyesight lingers a different living and looks curiously on the corpse. To think the thought of death merged in the thought of materials. To think that the rivers will flow and the snow fall and fruits ripen and act upon others as upon us now, yet not act upon us. To think of all these wonders of city and country and others taking great interest in them and we taking no interest in them. To think how eager we are in building our houses. To think others shall be just as eager and we quite indifferent. I see one building the house that serves him a few years or 70 or 80 years at most. I see one building the house that serves him longer than that. Slow moving and black lines creep over the whole earth. They never cease, they are the burial lines. He that was president was buried and he that is now president shall surely be buried. A reminiscence of the vulgar fate. A frequent sample of the life and death of workmen, each after his kind. Cold dash of waves at the ferry wharf, posh and ice in the river, half frozen mud in the streets, a grey discouraged sky overhead, the short last daylight of the twelfth month. A hearse and stages, other vehicles give place, The funeral of an old Broadway stage driver. The cortege mostly drivers. Steady the trot to the cemetery. Julie rattles the death bell. The gate is passed. The new dug grave is halted at. The living alight. The hearse uncloses. The coffin is passed out. Lowered and settled. The whip is laid on the coffin. The earth is swiftly shoveled in. The mound above is flatted with spades. Silence. A minute. No one moves or speaks. It is done. He is decently put away. Is there anything more? He was a good fellow. Free-mouthed. Quick-tempered. Not bad-looking. Able to take his own part. Witty. Sensitive to a slight. Ready with life or death for a friend. Fond of women. Gambled. Ate hearty, drank hearty, had known what it was to be flush, grew low-spirited toward the last, sickened, was helped by a contribution, died, aged 41 years, and that was his funeral. Thumb extended, finger uplifted, apron, cape, gloves, strap, wet weather clothes, whip carefully chosen, boss, spotter, starter, hostler, Somebody loafing on you, you loafing on somebody. Headway, man before and man behind. Good day's work, bad day's work. Pet stock, mean stock. First out, last out, turning in at night. 
To think these are so much and so nigh to other drivers, and he there takes no interest in them. The markets, the government, the working man's wages. To think what account they are through our nights and days. To think that other working men will make just as great account of them, yet we make little or no account. The vulgar and the refined, what you call sin and what you call goodness. To think how wide a difference. To think the difference will still continue to others, yet we lie beyond the difference. To think how much pleasure there is. Have you pleasure from looking at the sky? Have you pleasure from poems? Do you enjoy yourself in the city, or engaged in business, or planning a nomination, an election, or with your wife and family, or with your mother and sisters, or in womanly housework, or the beautiful maternal cares? These also flow onwards to others. You and I flow onward, but in due time, you and I shall take less interest in them. Your farm, profits, crops, to think how engrossed you are, to think there will still be farms, profits, crops, yet for you, of what avail? What will be, will be well, for what is, is well. To take interest is well, and not to take interest shall be well. The sky continues beautiful, the pleasure of men and women shall never be sated, nor the pleasure of women with men, nor the pleasure from poems. The domestic joys, the daily housework or business, the building of houses, these are not phantasms, they have weight, form, location, farms, profits, crops, markets, wages, government, are none of them phantasms. The difference between sin and goodness is no delusion. The earth is not an echo. Man and his life and all things of his life are well considered. You are not thrown to the winds. You gather certainly and safely around yourself. Yourself, 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 forever and ever. It is not to diffuse you that you were born of your mother and father. It is to identify you. It is not that you should be undecided, but that you should be decided. Something long preparing and formless has arrived and formed in you. You are henceforth secure, whatever comes or goes. The threads that were spun are gathered, the weft crosses the warp, the pattern is systematic. The preparations have every one been justified. The orchestra have sufficiently tuned their instruments, the baton has given the signal. The guest that was coming, he waited long for reasons. He is now housed. He is one of those who are beautiful and happy. He is one of those that to look upon and be with is enough. The law of the past cannot be eluded. The law of the present and future cannot be eluded. The law of the living cannot be eluded. It is eternal. The law of promotion and transformation cannot be eluded. The law of heroes and good doers cannot be eluded. The law of drunkards, informers, mean persons, not one iota thereof can be eluded. Slow moving and black lines go ceaselessly over the earth. Northerner goes carried and southerner goes carried. And they on the Atlantic side and they on the Pacific. And they between. And all through the Mississippi country and all over the earth. The great masters and cosmos are well as they go. The heroes and good doers are well. The known leaders and inventors and the rich owners and pious and distinguished may be well, but there is more account than that. There is strict account of all. The interminable hordes of the ignorant and wicked are not nothing. The barbarians of Africa and Asia are not nothing. The common people of Europe are not nothing. The American aborigines are not nothing. The infected in the immigrant hospital are not nothing. The murderer or mean person is not nothing. The perpetual successions of shallow people are not nothing as they go. The lowest prostitute is not nothing. The mocker of religion is not nothing as he goes. Off and in all these things, I have dreamed that we are not to be changed so much, nor the law of us changed. I have dreamed that heroes and good doers shall be under the present and past law, and that murderers, drunkards, liars shall be under the present and past law, for I have dreamed that the law they are under now is enough. If otherwise all came but to ashes of dung, if maggots and rats ended us, then alarm, for we are betrayed, then indeed suspicion of death.
Do you suspect death? If I were to suspect death, I should die now. Do you think I could walk pleasantly and well suited towards annihilation? Pleasantly and well suited I walk. Whither I walk I cannot define, but I know it is good. The whole universe indicates that it is good. The past and the present indicate that it is good. How beautiful and perfect are the animals. How perfect the earth and the minutest thing upon it. What is called good is perfect, and what is called bad is just as perfect. The vegetables and minerals are all perfect, and the imponderable fluids are perfect. Slowly and surely they have passed on to this, and slowly and surely they yet pass on. I swear I think now that everything without exception has an eternal soul. The trees have, rooted in the ground, the weeds of the sea have, the animals. I swear I think there is nothing but immortality, that the exquisite scheme is for it, and the nebulous float is for it, and the cohering is for it, and all preparation is for it, and identity is for it, and life and materials are all together for it.